Hi there, this is Mr Evans. This video is looking at um, the threat of substitutes within Porter's Five Forces. This is uh, part of our analysis of the competitive environment to get an understanding, uh, according to Porter, of the competitive environment we're operating in. We need to consider, are there any substitute uh, goods, um, businesses that might be in competition with us? Um, so, um, what are substitute products? Well, we've talked about substitute products. It's a, a product that, that um, uh, satisfies the same need. It fulfills the same need as, as what your uh, product is fulfilling. So if we think about um, fast food, for example, let's just say I own a kebab shop. Okay, my obvi most obvious competitors are the other kebab shops in the local area. If I've got five quid that I want to spend on dinner, uh, want to spend on kebabs and you know I've only got a limited number of places I can go if I've got five pounds that I want to spend on uh, uh, some fast food um, okay I can spend it in the kebab shop but also if I'm the kebab shop owner am I, is my competition not also the fish and chip shop uh, the takeaway pizza place uh, the chicken shop okay so how could we define substitutes? It's the extent to which other products are able to satisfy the needs of an organization's customers. Let's take another example. On the left here, I have a picture of a kind of generic all-purpose gym. Let's say my need as a customer is to, is to get fit. I want to get fit. Well, one option I might take is to go to a gym. Okay, but what could be substitute products for that? So there's a specific gym near me. The substitute goods for that would be the other gyms in the local area, fine. But also I've got options if I want to get fit. I could join, say, a, um, a particular sports club. I could just go uh, to the um, sports shop, buy my kit and then um, work out online, do some online workouts, there's plenty of them. Or I could, um, you know, find a personal trainer, okay? So if um, I am, um, you know, fulfilling a fairly generic need, then my um, level of competition will be, will be quite wide. If I am a specialist and there's not many um, substitutes for my service, I'm going to reduce the threat of substitutes. So on the right hand side here, let's just say um, uh, I wanted to become a power lifter for some reason. I wanted to learn how to power lift. Well, that's a very specific aim. Okay, I can't very well join the general gym or go to the local uh, running club to learn how to power lift. If I want a power lift, I've got to find a power lifting gym, a power lifting coach, and there's very few substitutes for that product. Okay, so um, the key point is the more the, the more uh, kind of generic the need that I'm fulfilling, the more substitute products there will be, and the less power I will have. If I really want to become a power lifter and there's only one power lifting gym, you know, they're going to have more ability to charge me more money. So what's going to be the impact on functional or strategic decisions? Well, perhaps I want my business to specialise in order to fulfil a particular need, or I want to create some sort of sense of USP, um, you know, something that's unique about my brand that nobody else can copy, that makes my brand that desirable, that there aren't really very many substitutes. Okay, so um, in terms of marketing, I'm going to want to increase market research into what consumer ne needs are. I might want to um, uh, develop a product with a particular kind of gimmick. Um, when I was younger, I remember this, Adidas came out with the Adidas Predator. It claimed that, you know, it had little ridges, it, this is a football boot, and um, it had little ridges on it, and it claimed it would help you hit free kicks better. And, and so there was no really substitute for that. There are plenty of substitutes for football, uh, uh, football boots, but this kind of special thing that Adidas put on their boot to make me hit my free kicks better, there was very few substitutes for that. So um, it made me, you know, specialising really. In terms of finance or operations, I might need to invest in specialist equipment to make sure that my uh, product stands out and it's different to everything else on the market. That sense of building a USP, making my product so there's no substitutes for it. 
I want to train my employees with unique skills and attributes so they can provide services that other organisations are unable to. Okay, key thing to take away, the more substitutes uh, that there are, the more competitive the organisation is going to have to uh, be in terms of trying to attract customers by dropping prices and things like that. The fewer substitutes, the better for the organisation. Um, in terms of competition, uh, I've got to fill that in. Obviously, uh, fewer substitutes. Uh, what's that going to do to profit? It should equal higher profit. Can't spell. Uh, and more substitutes. Obviously, is equal to lower profit. Okay, so um, that's Porter's Five Forces looking at this threat of substitutes.